16-year-old boy remanded in custody after appearing in court charged with the murder of Jody Chesney in East London. One of 39 people killed following stabbings in Britain since the beginning of the year. Just this month, three 17-year-olds were killed in London and in Birmingham. Three teenagers died in the space of 12 days in February. Well, as politicians and police grapple with how to deal with the surge in violence, one man in London has come up with his own solution, and it involves exchanging knives for vouchers. Anti-knife crime campaigner Farron Alex Paul is uh, joining us now. Hello. Hiya. I saw you on the telly this morning. You've got very interesting views on how we can tackle knife crime. Tell me. Um, I just feel like, you know, it's just... I think the talking... The time for talking has kind of passed, it, passed now. And I just thought of something that how I could interact with someone. I just put myself in that age, in that environment at that time. And I just thought of ways of how I can help. Tell me. So I just thought to myself, these young children, they haven't got income. They go to school, they work. They're in a lot of um, arguments and confrontations in the street. And what does that leave someone? I mean, you're stuck in your mum's house of a postcode. You can't move. You don't work. So the altercations you're involved with, you can never escape it. So I just thought to myself, if I can find some sort of way to let them willingly give their knives over, then that in itself is a positive transition. And then on top of that, from there, I've also thought of a way where, all right, if finances is your problem, I've now just started to um, build something where they can basically do online trading. And um, down Roman Road, they've, um, basically I'm speaking to someone and we're going to take the market stores over, where these young children will be able to buy products of their own as long as it's legit bring it down and sell it, make your profit. And hopefully doing that, they'd be having an uh, income of finances, which they won't have to go look for in a bad way. And they'd be away from the area where, they, where they're having problems. OK, let's, let's take that one step at a time. When you say you're giving kids vouchers mm -hmm. in order to hand in their go, are you, are you actually, the knife, are you paying them to have knives? No, I'm not paying them. I'm paying them to not have a knife. Yeah, but they, they've got to have, uh, if you, and then okay. get another knife and then... Oh, like, so basically... Um, yeah, so um, with kitchen knives, um, like, I'll take it and dispose it for you, but I won't pay for it because I do not want every mother in England messaging me like, it's your fault that I've lost all my kitchen knives on the jaw. <laughs> so, um, I mean, designer knives, innit? Like, I mean, our children are not blacksmiths. They're not sitting down in a shed making any designer knives. And obviously, if you've got designer knives, you've probably paid for them. So, hey, innit? Like, here's your money you paid for them, but in, a, but in a voucher. So you can't go and buy guns. I mean, sorry, so you can't go buy other weapons or drugs with it. I just basically evade myself from criticism, innit? How do you pay... How do you get the money to pay for these things? I've took 30 knives away, and each one, like, I give out £10 vouchers for a knife Amazing. and £20 for the things, but half of the people, they're not even taking vouchers, some of them. Do you know what I mean? So I've spent £300 to take 30 knives away, and... And you're funding all that yourself? Yeah. Like, I just walk into JD Sports, I say, you can have a £20 voucher, but I just buy loads of £10 vouchers. It's easier for me to sh like, split up, do you know what I mean? And I was, just writing a, I was just writing a voucher to question mark from Faz Amnesty and the price of the voucher, and I'd just be like, keep winning, keep changing. Like, it's little motivations like that. They go in there, you buy your change for £120. Cool, just pull out your voucher, in it, and then now you pay £100 instead of 20 I don't know. And what response have you had? You said 30 I've had so a bigger far. response, and what I've done, like, I've just got to the stage where I'm saying, you know what, the £20 don't matter, so any voucher that's out there, if you really want it, just... Ask for it and I'll get it for you. Mm. Whether it's JD Sports, Foot Locker, HMV, Argos, like, you can have it. We've seen a picture of you with a, with a samurai sword. Talk, talk to me about the background to this. Oh, the, the samurai sword? Oh, I've had the... You see it up here? Which one? Up there, on the telly. You were handing it in, apparently. Oh, there you were with it. Can you see it? Wait there, what, what video is that? Hey, wait there, that's the van. That's yeah. That's my van. I've done it at Ross, no? Oh, this is our out. filming that we did with you on Friday, do you remember? Oh, sorry, that's David, that's my G. Hey, listen, yeah? So, basically, I've gone down to South West London. Sorry about that. But anyway, I've gone down there and I've met someone. And what's happened, yeah, was, it's really crazy, but this is how I know that the, the trust is coming now. Yeah. It's been, imagine this, yeah? So, we've got down there now. As I've got down there, a big police van's come down the road with the blue lights and like, whoop! I've looked at one of the... Um, Sky guys are like, have you set me up? Like, why have you done this to me? He's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, whoop. As he said that to me, yeah, the guy, the guy whoever I'm meeting, he can see me, in it? Because he's around the area somewhere. He's like, mate, I just saw police come down the road. I'm like, bro, trust me, yeah, it's not me, in it, yeah? But at the same time, I've got two camera crews with me. I've got Sky with me. I've got my personal camera crew with me. We've got three vans, yeah? So it's a lot going on. And I'm like, I'm like oh, Christ, we're never going to get a dude down there now, are we? Then he's like, 
He said two minutes, but the two minutes kind of went to five to ten, so I started pacing a bit. And I think that like, everyone is kind of like, because we're in the moment, like, there's police flying there, this, that, there's a guy upstairs coming down with a samurai sword, oh, we should... I'm just thinking, ah, oh, mates, so I'm texting like, bruh, bruh, please don't let me come up here, yeah? And, because I don't know my way in that area, I've never been out there before, I'm from North London, like, do you know what I mean? I'm like, please don't let me come up here and, 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 and you film me, yeah? Then after I see him coming up there, I was like, I was like yes. And then obviously, I just went to handle my business, like, you've got a thing for me, I've got it. Once I've got it, my aim was to make it safe, I just got it, I'm out, boom. Dave, chat to him, David started talking to him and then I don't even know what was said there because I just kept it moving. Like, yeah, what happened to the sword? Because what happened, yeah, if I'd have stood there the sword for the interview, yeah, and the police would have rolled up, yeah, <laughs> then what the hell... <laughs> You'd have been in a lot of trouble! I'd, uh, um, <laughs> and I'd never say to the guys, I'd have been like, cool, it's mine, and then that'd have been drama for me. But because it is in a protective casing, yeah. and then I got into the van, and then it's in the toolbox, it's now not in public property, do you understand? And then basically I got it there, so I just said to myself, mate, Google the nearest police station, Bang, it was there, and that was it. I just kept it moving. Um, you've been stabbed yourself, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? Uh, listen, I was defending my girlfriend one time, I got stabbed nine times. I was defending my sister one time, I got stabbed nine times, and that is it. It's, n it's never been a gang thing. And do you know what, yeah? That's my sister, innit? That's my girlfriend, innit? Like, it, my, do like, my daughter, my mum, like, they're, coming, they're women, man. Like, it, it's just a natural thing to protect, do you know what I'm saying? I went out there just running out of a knife, going crazy or something, but. I don't know, it's just natural to protect and I just could end up in a bad end of it. That's it. Mm. Why do you think that young men particularly, although the, to, to some young women, but mostly young men, why do they carry knives? Because I think, listen, I, can I just give you one message? I got a message the other day on my phone. I got so much messages. The guy said, yeah, I've been walking around this knife for three years, yeah, hoping to see the guy that killed my brother. And when I do, I'm going to use it on him. Like, do you know what I mean? I've got other guys saying that I have no money and my mum's got no electric and she's disabled and I'm caring for her. Do you know what I'm saying? It's heartbreaking. Like, these kids are in situations, yeah, where they can't even escape if they want to. The other guy said, bruv, I'm going down to get milk for my mum and I'm getting chased with a machete. They know where his house is, they know his shop, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a proper tit for tat, like some Tom and Jerry business, but it's serious, do you know what I mean? So, I just think that we need to just um, show a little more attention to these children and just give them, and, like, just give them a bit of, like, warmth, man, and guidance, do you know what I'm saying? But that's what's going to win right now. So when you take a knife off somebody, mm. or they, they voluntarily give you the knife, mm. they do they then not feel vulnerable, given what you've been saying? No, but obviously these guys are saying that, the guys that's coming to me, they're saying that they want to transition from the knife. Some people, it's not only just people that give me knives, mums give me knives. I've had nice knives nice from my mum. I've had knives from older people that say that they want to confiscate it. And guess what? If you want to come to me and tell me that you found a knife in a park because you don't want to say that you, you had a knife, I'm not going to judge you and say, oh, mate, just tell the truth, mate, you got the knife, this is yours. Mate, give me the knife. Like, I know it's not in your hand. You can't put it in someone else's hand. No one ain't going to come to your house and take it, and it's gone. The reason I bring it to the police station, yeah, is just to satisfy, like, just, like, you know what I mean? Like, curiosity killed the cat, satisfaction brought it back. Like, I just want everyone to know that I ain't got it, it's cool. But right now, I'm about to start melting down these knives. I'm going to melt them down to jewellery. I'm going to make a big, I'm going to make a big, big chain that says Faz Amnesty on it, yeah? Remember I said that to you, like, yeah? I'm, like, forget a T-shirt, innit? I'm going to, like, I've done my research, it's 14,000... 14,050 degrees, yeah, is the melting point for stainless steel. Me and my boys doing research, yeah, I want to start melting that down. You're going to see me walking have a big family fast amnesty chain, like, ching, say nothing. <laughs> Watch, I, swear to, I promise you, I swear to God, I'm just doing research. I'm not that smart yet. And you could sell it on one of these stores that you've been to. Exactly, you've been do you know what I mean? Yeah. So my store, yeah, my daughter's coming to my store, but she does hair. How old's your daughter? Um, she's 16. Oh, lovely. She's the one that was at the party, the very first time yeah. I confiscated her. But she's really good, like... Tell me does. that story. So basically, I went to a party. No, my daughter went to my, my niece's party. I'm going to do it quick, yeah? Yeah, go on. So my daughter went to my niece's party. She was 40, my niece was 16. Went into the party one time, yeah? And then my brother phoned me and said, bro, there's guys outside here with knives. I went down there, I'm like, what? My daughter's down there, my niece is down there, I'm there. So I was there, boom, bap, bap. Long story short, I've took them out of the party with a bit of love. It's not bullying. This is, this is no, I'm a bad man for you. This is lo little bro, like, come on, like, there's a better life than this, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. And they gave me their knives and then we just kept it moving. Do you know what I'm saying? And if, and if anybody did... Um, question the authenticity of that, yeah, then now you know, yeah, that, it, that if I'm doing what I'm doing now, them little guys that was 14 and 15 in that party that knew me and my family, it was not hard to persuade them to hand over the knife, do you know what I'm saying? But it's love, man, I'm feeling, uh, it's all good right now, man. Like, I feel like there's a nice positive transition of these guys and I believe that the um, communication and the trust between us has, like, it's growing, do you know what I'm saying, between me and the community. And I also like to think it's growing between me and the local authorities as well. Mm. So tell me about the stalls. Tell me what, how that's going to work. Oh, the stalls. So I've got one guy, yeah. He's, he, 
All right, listen, his name's Joe Leslie, yeah? He's called Cockney Pride, yeah? And he's come, like, he's got basically a banging idea, yeah? Where children can, tr like, young people can trade stuff. But as I'm saying to these guys, yeah, they, there's loads of things you can sell. It's not only drugs. If you find your product, you can find your client, you now find your profit margin. And that's what we've done now. So, mate, as I said, my daughter's gonna come in the store. We just ordered a bunch of stuff from China for cheap. Mate, come and sell all the hair stuff in the store. Do you know what I mean? Like, and my other, someone else is making dresses that they make from scratch. That's going to go in the store. Like, just little stuff like that. Mate, if you want to go buy your little Bluetooth um, little radios from China, mate, for £2 and come and sell them over for £5 each, and you make all that money, the profit for the month, mate, just pay your, uh, your subscription fee for the month. Bang, Bob's your uncle. Mm. It's all yours. OK. So... And, you and, think... and you can trade that online and physically on the market stores in do you know what I mean? So, yeah. it's, so it's consistent, like, you can do what you want. So do you think it is about money and finances rather than about protection in the long run? That's um, why When you say protection, do you mean protection from the local authority or family? No, or what? Pr protecting yourself when you're carrying a knife. Oh, no. Um, so I think it's a bit of both. Like, you can never... For anyone to try and um, pinpoint this to one um, situation or thing, it's, that's silly. Like, that's, like, you're being oblivious to facts. Do you know what I mean? Like, you need to understand, yeah, there's, there's, there's poverty, there's... Pride, there's peer pressure, there's fear, and it all amounts to one thing. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's not, a, no one can pinpoint what it is. It's, it's, it's just that everybody needs to come together. Everyone, teachers, local authorities, parents, and even the youngest, brother. Like, life, li life is important, man. Like, life is very important. People are saying it's an epidemic at the moment, but you were stabbed, what, um, nearly 19 years ago, something mm -hmm. like that? Um, so it's always My, been a problem. It, I don't... I, there's no way it, it, it's as bad then as it is now. Because now it's crazy. Like, my things, I, I believe, like... It was hard to get into my position I got into, to get stabbed. It weren't just because I was running around the roads, you know what I'm saying? Like, my, both my stabbings um, started in a physical fight with hands. Do you understand? The, the, the stabbings both time came after that. It, it weren't like we started stabbing each other. I never, ever held a knife. The first time I got stabbed, I never had a knife. The second time, I, I still never had a knife. And, yeah, I was angry for a long time. I was angry. Like, I was so angry. And I wanted everyone, but in time, yeah, and a bit of love and guidance from my mummy, brother, I just, I just took that negative energy and just changed it into a positive driving force. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'd walk past the guy and say hi, and he'd say hi too, man. Like, life's, life's better than that. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, it's bigger than that. Life goes on, man. And again, you are watching Sky News. We have been talking about knife crime, uh, knife crime uh, campaigner. Farron Alex Ball is uh, with us. Hello again. Hi. We were talking about Idris Elba and what you thought about him. Before we ask your views, mm -hmm. uh, let's hear what he has to say. Yo, knife crime is not new, yeah? I grew up in the 80s and there was knife crime back then between blacks and whites and now it's definitely between young black men in small, tiny communities and it's affecting everyone. We all look stupid. You look even more stupid. If you've got a knife or you know someone that's got a knife, tell them to stab themselves right now. Trust me, because you're just going to stab your future if you go and stab someone else. You become a murderer, you go to prison, you ain't got for what? For some beef that lives within your community. You need to see past that. It, we have to say something about it as well. Entertainers that are out there, there's young people that look up to us, man. We need to just vocalise this, send a message out saying, put the knives down, it's done. All right, it's done. We don't need to be killing ourselves. We have so much more we can offer. And you're going to kill your future, you're going to kill someone else's future, and it's done. Entertainers, do me a favour, man. Put out similar videos. Let's try and put out something and say that we care for our communities. Stop the knife crime, please. I just say respect him. Like, for him, in the position he's in, like, there's a lot of people that just take the back seat and they literally... It's not... There's, there's no law that says you have to get on your phone, yeah, and put a video on social media to help. And he's done that, so I, all I can say is just utmost respect to him, man. And, like... He's someone I look up at anyway, so... Will it make a difference, it, somebody like that? I, I, I think it will make a difference, because if there's people you look up to and you see them saying you don't do that, then it helps, do you understand? And it, like, it just may let a younger person just think twice and understand that, hmm, maybe... Hmm, Farron's saying that, I'll be saying that, Giggs is saying that, this person, do you know what I'm saying? Maybe this ain't the way forward, so... Yeah, I mean, if I could have such an impact coming from where I've come from, Mate, like, God knows what he, where his impact can go, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, link up, I just, let's do this, man. Whoever's like-minded and want to get this thing done, let's go, man. What do you think about stop and search? 
Um, I think stop and search is going to be hard for the police to um, achieve because they're, they're currently understaffed, right? OK, so if someone's currently understaffed, why are you going to give them another workload of stop and search? What you need to concentrate on is putting more of a bigger police presence on the street because no one's just going to run down the road and start stabbing each other in front of the police, are they? And that's it. That's what I've got to say about it. it was, that's a very political thing. And I want to know that when stop and search comes, is everybody going to be stopped and searched on a fair basis, not just certain people. No, they're going to stereotype, aren't they? They're going to... Um... Yeah, there you go. But I'm saying to you straight up and down, I believe the young black males are going to be the, be the ones hit the most hard, hard, um, hard of this. So, I mean, I love my tracks here, my hoodie. Mate, Metropolitan Police, mate, do not make a mistake when you stop me, but I'm telling you. But I wear my hoodie every day and I wear it for comfort. Do you know what I'm saying? I got my hoodie on right now and this morning. I love it. 56 black men straight. Shout out to you, man, Cephas. Please, I keep telling you, you got 56 black men. Can, I, can you make it number 57, please? Please. What does please. that mean? Because they've got something that, that's basically... What's 56 black men? Yeah, it's 56 black men, yeah, and they're trying to highlight, highlight how stereotypical it is and how black people get treated with hoodies and stuff like that. But the truth How is... How do they get treated? Because I think that they get treated like... Um, they, get eat, they get picked on. I believe the police um, stereotype them. And I believe that, as I said to you, like, I'll be walking down the road and certain people they grab their bag and they pull it to the side and they step to the side. And it's got to the point where now I will see someone down the road and I know they're not like that. So I go down, I, I move out of their physical space so they don't do that movement that's going to offend me. Do you understand? But I'm the guy that will probably help you. I, 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 I will hold the door open all day for you and take your bag down. Do you know what I'm saying? But as I'm saying, like, people need to stop judging a book by its cover, man. But you never know what the story's going to read inside. Mm. But when... You know, we've seen all these stabbings, 39 stabbings to death so far this year. A lot of them have involved young black men. Mm -hmm. um, you don't think, even with that uh, evidence, that... No, 100%, yeah, because, as I said, but people say young black men, but if you go to Scotland, yeah, it's going to be young, black, um, young, young Caucasian men because that's the po population up there. You're talking about Tottenham and... and um, you're talking about Tottenham and Hackney. What, what, what do you think? You're going to see a different nationality up there? Of course it's going to be higher there. But the truth is... I would, like, say, out of 100 people that's offered me knives, just say, I'm telling you, 70% of them of them's been Caucasian. Really? And I don't know whether that means the black people are just holding their knives or they don't want to give it to me. But I'm saying to you, and it's not a race thing here. It's a, it's a community, it's a social problem, do you understand? So... So you're saying 70 out of 100 knives that have been I'm handed over? You, not been handed over, but out of my messages, like, do you know what I'm saying? But out of, so out of the 30 I've probably picked up, like, I can easily say that 20 of them, like... 20 plus has been from Caucasian people, do you understand? And mm. some of them's been from parents, some of them's been found in the park. So it's not one thing that you've got to put your hand on. It's a joint effort for everyone to show due diligence yeah, and care in the system for the children. What would you say to parents of. Um... I say parents, like, you have to respect parents, you know, but not everyone's got the same life, you know. Some parents, yeah, have got children that just walk out the door and they can't even hold them in the house. What are you going to do? Drag your kid in that, that's um, 17 and 6 foot 5. And then if you drag him by his shirt, he just calls social service and you get bagged. Listen, parents, yeah, they're doing what they can, some of them, and some of them ain't in it. But you can't put all parents under one brush, do you understand? Like, ask single mum or single dad. But some, some single parents have raised the best of people in the world, do you understand? And some, double, and some parents that's been in a fully functioning um, wedding, um, 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 marriage for years, they've got a, a dysfunctional child. It's just what it is, man. Like, and people's got to adapt to the situations that's put in front of them to get over them, if you know what I mean. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. What are you going to do with your ten kids? How are you ten you've got? <laughs> Listen, yeah, I'm proud of my kids, isn't it? Like, as I'm saying to you, isn't it? It's like, really impressive, like, What it is now, people keep getting the numbers wrong, but right now, I'm not going to go into it right now. It's all love. I'm a father and I love my children yeah. and I'll keep loving them and they're the, one of the what, biggest what, driving what, forces. What advice do you give to them? How do you keep them on the straight and narrow? My, all my kids are doing A-levels um, a and GCSEs. None of my kids have got no problem with the police. I'm fine, that's it. Like, the guidance is there, they know right from wrong and that's it, bruv. Like, don't make rocket science of it. It's that the kids are blessed. But what, what do you, how do you create well, what that I do, environment I make sure your kids that, that others, you I know, make say sure, other parents don't? Well, I make sure that my children, I try to give them what I can so they don't have to look for it anywhere else. When they go to school and stuff and they got good reports, their mum would contact me and stuff like that, and I make sure that I make a big fuss about it. Wow, that's excellent, Dora. Like, listen, we're going to shop to buy you some trainers, like, because now, now, now that would encourage positive, repeti repetitive behaviour, do you understand? Mm. So it's not that, it's just like, mate, listen, if you tell your dog to sit, a puppy, that's it. Bruv, it's going to get a reward. Thank you. So, bruv, listen, treat your kids, man, like, it's just love, innit? Like, it ain't got to be financial. It's got to be, like, even a little cuddle, even a little... That's well done, son. 
they go long ways. Mm. Like my seven-year-old son, yeah, he still says, I love you, dad. When I say to him, son, I love you, he's like, I love you, dad. And that to me is just so amazing. Like, bruv, it means so much to me, you know what I'm saying? But, bruv, it's, it's all love, isn't it? Yeah. So how are we going to roll out what you're doing? So that Well, basically, what, up and down the what needs to happen is now, hopefully, the local authorities that can basically add some legality to my what I'm doing, they, I'm happy to work with them and contact them. And I don't know, maybe we can replicate this on a bigger scale. Maybe we can get some local authorities involved. I'm willing. And anyone that's like-minded for the same agenda of stopping the killing and preserving youth, then let's go. Do you think it's... We've, we've reached a, a position now where we are becoming more aware that we do need to go out and help our kids and well, actually the, the epidemic that we're talking about is, is going to start subsiding? Well, I don't know, because who else is actually going out there and doing it? No one is, really. I, like, but people like you and yeah, like we're holding a torch. Yeah, we're holding a torch, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I've, like we're holding a torch, bruv, yeah, but I've hit the road with my torch and I'm looking in the alleyway to see what I can see, you get me? But other people need to come through and, hit, and start hitting the roadside as well mm. because it's a presence, do you understand? And when people... Like, you know, if someone knew you cared for them, then maybe they wouldn't be so dysfunctional and so careless. But someone cares for you, you know? It's about okay. love. Yeah. Um, what would you say to some people who are potentially watching this afternoon who've got a knife that are thinking about Bro, going listen, out? I'm just life. saying this, that like, it's not rocket science. A life is not worth your knife. I mean, a knife is not worth your life, bro. It's that simple, isn't it? What about if you're going out to take your knife for protection? No, that's wrong. Just lie that because you're going to get stabbed or you can go jail yourself, isn't it? All I'm saying, yeah, nobody cares until it's theirs and everybody's going to wait till it's too late. Don't do it, man. Like, trust me, like, let's jump in this thing and help the youths, man. They're our future. Like, Nike, God forbid, I'm just saying, like, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, where would you be without such a man right now? Imagine he was lost to something so senseless, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm saying, like, all these people need to start sponsoring our, our future athletes. Like, if you see someone in the school that's running sub-10, Nike, get down there and make him love himself. Let one of the athletes sign his trainers, bruv. Do you know what that do for him? When I was doing athletics, yeah, I, I was wearing my coach's ex-student's boots from 11 years ago, and I was still winning. Do you know if someone had come to me and gave me the pair of fresher boots, well, that would probably inspired me to keep doing it, do you know what I'm saying? Like, bruv, just show some, bruv, it's love, man. That's mm. what it is, man. Not even love, it's guidance. It's just, bruv, like, you know a flower, yeah, without water and sunlight, it's not going to grow. It's that simple. Bruv, nurture it, it will grow. And when it blossoms and realise how pretty and beautiful it is, it won't want to lose it. Mm. You're amazing. Huh? You're amazing. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to talk to you. you Sadly, too, we're man. out of time. I could have talked to you all afternoon. Oh, uh, great to see you. You um, too, man. How amazing is he? We'll be back in just a second.